warrant and then the squad. Just take us into the selection meeting on Saturday. About how long did that one walk? Uh, a couple of hours. Yeah. So um, yeah, some good some good discussions and uh, and some good talking points about the squad and yeah, talked about the three games as well and um, you yeah, went through. Uh, had a debrief. Uh, from Prav Mathema, just to update on all the injuries and when he thought players would be back in full training and stuff as well. So that was part of the discussion too. Just on the injuries, there's a few players going into the tournament. Liz Nichols, Faletel and Gareth Anscombe haven't played in the warm-up matches. How confident are you that they'll be ready for Fiji or when they be ready? Yeah. Uh, we're told they'll be ready. Um, Faletel has been pretty much back in training, sort of up and running. He'll, he'll do some contact work this week, so he'll be available. Dewey Lake's going to, uh, do you think, uh, Ryan Elias is going to take a a, um, a part in training this week. Um, so we're, you know, reasonably confident that those guys are going to be back. They relate to your captain as yeah. well as obviously Adam Nigger. I was, I was just with this. I was all good. <laughs> yeah. Not too bad, um, you know, with rehabbing and, and doing what we need to do and hope to be, be back in time. Or on the co captaincy is something that you. You alluded to earlier in, in yep. the sort of summer. How is this going to work and why did you chose to play it this way? Oh, I just think that the two lads, uh, the two young players, uh, players for the future for us, and uh, I just think they'll complement each other really well. I'm excited about um, being a good, good mate, got a good relationship. Um, and then, depending on uh, what game it is, um, you know, one or one will lead and be captain for that day, and the other other will be supporting them. So, um, yeah, I just uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity, um, something I've never done before. But uh, I did speak about it, you know, particularly with two younger players in the squad and captain, and both of them got a big future ahead of them. Yeah, but just briefly on the squad, you're only taking two scrum halves. Yep. Are you conf- that's a, it seems like a big order to go over for two players with that. Uh, yeah, potentially. Um, you know, if we do pick up injuries, it's it's not too too far of a distance to go. Um, both of them have been really robust in this campaign in terms of where the, the training or the three scrum halves have been uh, that we've had in. Uh, I did talk earlier that we'd probably, you know, there's potent- potentially a, a, a point there where you've got to make a concession and when you're looking at a bit of, a bit of depth and uh, probably all along that we were we were thinking of three three nines but when we came to we're just looking at some depth and in, in our back three and, and covering players um, that are getting on a little bit and you know whether they can back up in all the games and uh, we've probably got players that have in the, in the past have picked up injuries or niggles and stuff so just wanted a bit more cover in that back three. Jack, congratulations. A lot of experience in this side Perhaps more than with yourself and Gary. How much would you lean on on the more experienced players going into this tournament? I think yeah, there's there's loads of um, experienced uh, players in the in the squad, and and uh, they, they've been they've been great in camp. You know, um, there's plenty of leaders w- within the whole squad that that say their opinion and 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 um, get the get the squad going. So it's good. There are congratulations as well. How would you describe your relationship with Jack? Um, Thank you, first of all. But uh, yeah, look, I think me and Jack have played together for a long time. Uh, you know, twenties together, and uh, now with the Osprey together and room together through uh, through these many camps. So I think our relationship is very good. You know, we quite straight with each other and honest with each other. If something needs to be said, you know, we're happy to to say each, to each other, and the other takes it on board. You know, coming from a a place of of friendship and you know wanting to each other to get better, but uh, yeah, no, I couldn't think of anyone better to, to share this role with and to, you know, be going away with. What's Jack like as a roommate? Good roommate, good on the tunes. Uh, <laughs> offer some good music in the room. Um, does like a sunbathe though. So, you know, Turkey was out on the balcony quite often. Uh, but no, you know, can't fault can't fault the man in any way. And Jack, you obviously played in the side that he was captain but when you were younger. What, what's he like as a captain? Uh, he's 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 great to be a captain. He's captain of the twenties when we we went up to to Argentina and yeah, he was great. He's uh, he leads, leads from the front and when something needs to be said, he will say it, but won't, won't say too much either. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of it's done on the field. 
Thank you very much. Lawrence? Thank you, boys. Add a little fun journey. He said that Star Club ended four years ago. You're on the pitch together, beating New Zealand, and turns his dad when you'd be sat next to each other just four years later on your way to the World Cup as captains, Jack or Sally? Um, no, no, I probably would never have never thought of it uh, four years ago, but yeah, it's been a good few years, and yeah, it's just like David said, we played each other for years, and you now the Ospreys, and it's, and it's great to, to um, be here with them. And there is happened quick to you, I mean. Yeah, it has. I think, you know, you look back at, at four years ago, we'd probably both just be happy to be going to a World Cup or playing for Wales, you know, never mind being co captains, you know, for the for the tournament. Um but yeah, like you said, it's happened happened quickly and I think um you know, sometimes sometimes life moves that way, especially rugby the way it's the way it's developing and, and moving quickly, I think um yeah, you know, just just how the game's going. Warren, you've got Centurion is at eight, ten, thirteen, fifteen guns this World Cup. How much did that kind of fall to gear for that George North feel you want going to the four? Yeah, I think it was just a, a mix of getting trying to get their balance right with the experience. Um, you know, we probably saw on Saturday there was a little bit uh, players would have learned a lot from that out team against a, a really strong South African team. So yeah, that was just a, I suppose the some of the discussions around what experienced players that we felt we needed to, to take with. Uh, some of the youngsters that have come on the squad and, and get their opportunity. And so the back row, I make you taking sand at the eight you had with the Wainer squad. It's fun training it and talked all about the competition at sand. And it's just, it's that six spot now the training it and it? Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, one. I mean, Tane's yeah, he's, he's really unlucky having get picked up picked up that shoulder injury. Um, and probably looking at the next couple of weeks, you're looking at. The amount of players that can take a part in trainings and wanted to have some some live sessions and that. So you know, he's unfortunately been the one that's um, drawn the short straw in terms of that. So I chatted to him this morning and said to him, "Be ready um, because there's you know always potentially an opportunity." Um, and spoke to him last week about you know where he was at with the injury and that you know it, it, it was going to be a tight call depending on whether we took him. Um, so yeah, it's um, yeah we've probably got three genuine sevens that are that are going, but players that can cover a couple of positions. That the beauty of this World Cup is that we do get a little bit more breathing space in terms of the length of time between the games. You know, the first first game, the second game is a short turnaround, and then we've got an eight day turnaround to Australia, and then thirteen days to to um, the Georgia game, and uh, and the, in the past. Um, you know, it's been a challenge when you've had four day turnaround so um, a little bit more of a luxury in terms of that so hopefully it gives us an opportunity to keep players fit or freshen some players up between games and um, which has been some of the toughest conversation as you've had you've mentioned Kieran Hardy you talked about both the, the midfield and I know the last two weeks John Roberts master in and this side there yeah I mean um, you know, we shared some of the calls with the, with the coaches and um, I'll be available to Talk to all the players today. They want to give me a call, or the ones they haven't spoken to, and um, and uh, yeah, the others. I will make contact with them as well, just to say to, to make sure they're ready. Uh, we didn't speak in the change rooms afterwards. We had everyone in the change rooms afterwards after the game, just to say thanks for the effort they've all put in the last couple of weeks, knowing that there's going to be some disappointed players uh, on Monday. But uh, for those that do miss out, just make sure they keep working hard and. And then, you know, there's always potentially an opportunity. And just finally, from the end, a lot of those will have been involved in the sort of fitness training camp that did not experience the performance. How important is it if they manage mentally, physically, now by by them? Yeah, hopefully they go back uh, with their regions uh, and in pretty good shape. Um, generally, most of the players say it's the best shape they've been in um, from a physical point of view, um, which is a which is a positive and they can take some of that back and, and hopefully demonstrate uh, the work that they've been doing when they go back to back to their regions. Um, and for a lot of players, I think, uh, that have been in the squad for the first time, it's kind of, you know, experiencing what the next level's about and and educating them on their prehab and rehab and, and nutrition and, 
you know, working hard as well and, and stuff. So uh, I know that there has been a huge amount of learning during that process for, for a lot of those players. Charles? Warwick, given that you've been, if it, given that you have three scrum halves in the squad for the whole time, and the other nations have made three scrum halves, the expectation had been that you would make three scrum halves. Did that come as a big shot to Kieran? How, how did he take it? Because obviously he'd have been preparing, but he was always the form of conclusion. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, we'd had that discussion with the players right from the start that the tipping co- point could be that we take two nines or three tens, so... There wasn't, there was no certainty about anyone being selected in the squad, yeah. And um, will he remain with the squad to trade over there? So are you going to keep any guys with the squad training before you go to France? Uh, not at the moment, no, not now. Hey, Mitch. Or do it, one of them as an HIA that you want to keep them in the squad or is it hamstring of the warm-up? Who's the backup scrum up? Sam Kosselin. And what experience has he got in that position? Um... Look, if we, if we do get an HIO and someone's out, then we're going to have to potentially make a call with a miss out in the World Cup squad. We, we, we know we've taken that risk. Um, you know, other teams have done the same thing. And like I said, you've got a pinching point somewhere in in, in the squad in terms of the numbers. Um, but uh, like I said, those those nines have been pretty robust and, you know, we're confident they're going to be fine. And, uh, you know, if we get an HIO in one of the games, then we'll need to... A look at that and address it and see what happens. Um, Jack and Noe, you both captain the 20s, you weren't co-captains, but how did that work then and what do you take from that experience into this very Jack first? Um, yeah, it took, took a lot from, from the 20s. Uh, so you played my first year in a, in a day and learned from, a lot from him for, for when I went for the second year. And uh, yeah, took took a lot from it and looking, looking forward to, to, to what comes of it. Okay. Yeah, I'd like, like you spoke earlier, it'd be all about our you know our relationship and and how we work together on field, off field, and things like that. And I think you know we've already got you know a great relationship. And like we spoke about earlier, we, we work together well. So um, you know whether it's like as Gat said, one captain on the day, the other backing up. You know we we both be happy to to do that for each other, and you know happy to do it for the country. Okay, we'll come to Alex and then Jay. I worry enough. My Welsh isn't great, but I think on TV the guy said that you know there's been going to France. Unless we're aiming to get to it in the final, is that your target, and is that move free? I think just it's one step at a time. Is get out of your pool first, and then see where you are at. And you know, we don't you don't look too far ahead. Um, I think everyone's every team is is focusing on that. Get out of your pool, and then um, you know, take it one step at a time. And Wales have always been a team of momentum. So how big is that? Each again, make you feel like if you can win that, that's going to be a massive springboard. But. Yeah, it's hugely. It's, had, it's a big. Uh, saw the result against um, France. Um, you know, France didn't have had probably put out a, a, you know, a number of younger players in their squad that had, had played that first game against um, Scotland. Um, yeah, we're pretty clear on how we want to play against Fiji, and uh, but we know how dangerous they are, and they've had they're going to have had five warm up games before the World Cup, so they're going to be rugby fit. Um, but they're picking up a few knocks and injuries as well. So, But, um, yeah, yeah we're, we're all pretty well aware of how important that first game is and to start, and then you can win that game, get some momentum from the next game, and then you go in with some confidence, and then hopefully, yeah, you've got a chance of winning the group. OK, come to James, and then we, we are going to be tight. So we'll go James and then Rob. Warren, just in terms of the go-cats, how do you see that dynamic working? For example, if one wants to take and post them on the curve of the corridor, should the situation like that happen? Yeah, well, who is in charge on the, on the day? You know, he'll make the final decision, but yeah, that's, a, that's always a discussion that takes place on the field where um, senior players within the group might make a suggestion, I think we should take the three points, and others might say, you know, we should go for the corner or tap and go and um, you know the captain has the final decision for that on the day Okay Rob well. Was it a tough call in the second row just taking the three are you using Chris as a second row option now Yep Yep You, you haven't really played it that much I think yep. a little bit I mean it's okay but do you see him as a high rip player or at, at the moment we do we know he can come in the second row he's a good line out forward he's incredibly athletic um Still learning his role a little bit at six in terms of um, 
but uh, you know, eventually, I think long term, we see him as a as a six who can cover second row at the moment. Okay, and um, question over Yeah, uh, either.